Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog and today we are going to rank restaurants again. We're going to Disney's Hollywood Studios today to talk about our worst to best rankings for the restaurants in the studios. Now remember, we're only talking about counter service and table service locations, so we're not talking about the little kiosks or the places that don't really have a larger menu, though we will touch on those a little bit at the end of this video. So in case you're wondering, we will be talking about Baseline Tap House in this video. That's a brand new location that just opened in the Grand Avenue section of Hollywood Studios. We'll have a review for you at the end of this video, so please stay tuned, watch through the whole thing, and we will talk about Baseline after our rankings are finished. And also, if you want to know our favorites in Hollywood Studios, you can definitely head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash DHS list and sign up for our newsletter and we'll get you a handy dandy PDF with all of our favorites in the studios that you can take with you on your trip and check off your favorites. Okay, so let's get started with our least favorite. Least favorite, as you guys know, if you've watched the worst restaurants in Disney World video is gonna be Sunset Ranch Market. I don't like this place. Primarily what I'm not a big fan of is Catalina Eddie's and Rosie's All American Cafe. Those two places, I don't really see a reason to eat there. Like I said, there are a couple of good menu items every once in a while. There's a fried green tomato sandwich there that's pretty good right now. But overall, these spots have long lines. There's no indoor seating. It's all outside. And when it's hot and you're sweaty and you just want to eat, this is not the food you want to eat. Over at Fairfax Fair and Hollywood Scoops, they're technically in Sunset Ranch Market and they're not bad at all. They're okay. But Catalina Annie's and Rosie's All American Cafe, I would say kind of stay away from those for now. There's better food to eat in the studios. Okay, next, Pizza Rizzo. I love the theming here. I think it's super cute. I don't necessarily think that kids would understand the theming, even though it's supposed to be Muppets themed. I think that the theming is more for adults. It is kind of a New York City theme because of course Rizzo, the rat, is in charge here. So I don't think the kids are really gonna get it. And on top of that, the food here is pretty abysmal. It's those pillowy, kind of doughy pizzas, the counter service pizzas that Disney's been doing for years and years and years, and I really don't know why they can't get it together and get some, you know, good counter service pizzas. You know, they do flatbreads other places and those are pretty good. Maybe they can start doing that here, but these pizzas are pretty bad. And the menu doesn't really have anything else on it that is excellent. So I would say Pizza Rizzo, you just gotta kind of stay away from there. Go look around at the theming, but not worth eating there, I don't think. All right, next up, ABC Commissary. Now, ABC Commissary has okay food. They're changing up the menu a little bit, which I really like. They're doing some experiments where, you know, they bring the food to your table instead of you having to kind of bring it on a tray. They're making the food a little bit more upscale here, which I love, but the actual theming here is a dud. It looks like a cafeteria in an office building in New York City or in, you know, Studio City in California. It's boring, it's not fun to sit in there. Everything's sort of outdated and it's just not a magical atmosphere so while the food is okay it's not great and the theme is pretty pretty bad so ABC commissary not on my high up their list okay next I'm gonna talk about Hollywood and Vine so Hollywood Vine. Some people love it, some people hate it. This one is a character meal right now. It's Minnie and Friends, so it's Minnie, Mickey, and a couple of the other Fab Five year round, but they do seasonal themes. At Christmas time, they'll be dressed in their Christmas clothes, and springtime, they're dressed in kind of springtime clothes, etc. So you're going to see a different theme depending on what time of year you're there with the characters. Now, the food here, in my experience, has been pretty decent. I actually thought that this was quite a decent buffet, but I've heard some accounts recently that people have really said this is a bad restaurant you don't want to go here it's not good food so maybe with the switch over to the mini character the or the mini and fab five characters maybe the food got worse i haven't been recently so i'm going to say i enjoy it when i'm there but i'm hearing a lot of people say no not for me don't go don't waste your money so i'm going to throw that one right here in the middle Next up is Sci-Fi Dine-In, and I know a lot of you hate this restaurant for the food quality. I know you think it's not very good. I don't mind it, I think it's decent. I know they just got some new chefs over there, people from Deluxe Burger in Disney Springs, which is a restaurant I love, and I think they're doing really good things with food. So I'm interested to see kind of what happens over there at Sci-Fi. Now, the atmosphere here is tough to beat. It's excellent. You are sitting in a convertible car and watching a drive-in movie, and it's usually, it's little clips of kind of B-movies from the 60s and 70s and 50s as well. So it's kind of fun, very kitschy. 
I think older kids will really like it. I'm not sure if little kids will really understand it, although they'll like sitting in a car probably. But this is Shake's Burgers and stuff like that. They have some decent ribs, but you know, it is comfort food, but it's not excellent food yet. I think they're on their way there, but they're not there yet. And I know a lot of you have had very bad experiences at Sci-Fi with the food quality. So definitely leave us a comment here and let us know your thoughts on Sci-Fi because it is kind of hit or miss. And I think a lot of people have had misses lately. Although I find it to be a very interesting and fun restaurant and I don't think the food is that bad. All right, next up, we are going to Backlot Express, which is my favorite counter service location in Hollywood Studios. I think they do a really, really good job. I think the theming here is fascinating and a lot of fun. It's like you're on a Hollywood Backlot. So there's lots of props. There's lots of signage up for the people who are working on the fictional shows that are going on. So it's kind of fun to wander around and look at all the props and all the theming. Food here is pretty standard. They do have a bit of a Star Wars menu here still. They've got Darth Vader waffles and some other themed items on the menu. Otherwise, it's just kind of burgers, chicken nuggets, etc. But it's really not bad. They always have a couple of kind of seasonal interesting items going on. It is indoors, it is air conditioned, so um, yay. All right, next I'm going to Mama Melrose Ristorante Italiano now. Some of you don't like this. I know we got a few comments on our worst restaurants in Disney World telling me you are not a fan of Mama Melrose. This place has very interesting theming as well. I've never quite understood how they think this works. Mama Melrose is apparently from New York and moved out to California, and so it's kind of a mix of Little Italy and LA. So that's the best I can do in terms of what it's supposed to be. It is Italian food. I think it's, it's about on a par with Olive Garden, maybe a step up from Olive Garden. I've had excellent meals here. I will say straight up, I love the food here. I love their steak. They pair it their steak with this amazing macaroni and cheese and I get it and I adore it. I get it all the time. I've had their pasta dishes here. Those are great. So I really enjoy this restaurant. I've had really good service here, but I know some of you haven't. So please let us know in the comments what your thoughts are about Mama Melrose. All right, now we're headed to 50s Primetime Cafe. You guys know I like this restaurant. I talk about it all the time here on DFB Guide. 50s Primetime, again, interesting theming here. You've got your cousins who are the servers and you are eating in mom's kitchen. And so there's a lot of kitschy stuff from the 50s and the 60s. You can watch TV shows from the 50s and 60s on the little black and white TV screens around the restaurant. Your cousins who are your servers will probably tell you to go stand in the corner or sing I'm a Little Tea pot in front of the whole restaurant or something like that if your elbows are on the table or if you have bad manners or something like that it's kind of fun and as always you can let them know hey we don't want to take part in all of that we just want to eat our meal and watch everybody else get sort of shamed and uh and they'll be okay with that just let them know the food here is comfort food to the utmost you've got fried chicken pot roast things like that and uh, one of our favorite things here is the borson cheese fried borson cheese is excellent I'm so glad it's back on the menu. It was gone for a few years. Onion rings are great. Desserts here are fun. So I think it's good. I know the food quality isn't excellent. It's not way, way, way up there, but it's okay. And it's good enough as far as I'm concerned for the prices. I really do enjoy this restaurant. And my number one here is going to be Hollywood Brown Derby. And I will tell you honestly, when I started to make this list, I didn't think Brown Derby was going to be at the top. But when I looked at everything else, I was like, well, yeah, Hollywood Brown Derby is going to be at the top. This is the signature restaurant in Hollywood Studios. I was just there recently and had a wonderful meal. Of course, this is themed after the Hollywood Brown Derby in Hollywood. It's kind of stuffy in there and kind of fancy. And I don't know if your kids will really love it, but the food is definitely the best food you're going to get in the studios. The steak here is great. The, the filet is really good. I had the grouper recently, which was great. They have a breaded lobster tail that you can add to your meal, which is amazing. Even if you don't like lobster tail, you will like this. It's excellent. Lots of good items here. Of course, they have the famous grapefruit cake, which used to be served in a full portion, and now you get it as part of a trio of desserts. So it's a smaller portion. And they do have a grapefruit cake martini if you're into that whole vibe. Really good stuff here. The service is quite good in my experience. But again, it is going to be a heavier meal in the middle of your park touring day. So plan ahead for that. And remember also that the Hollywood Brown Derby does run the Dine with an Imagineer special 
special event, which is really, really fun. If that's something that you're interested, you can read about it over on Disney Food Blog. Okay, now it's time to talk about Baseline Tap House. I didn't want to put it in the rankings because we've only been there once. It was the first day, so I'm not sure where it fits yet into my rankings, but I definitely want to talk about it here and give you guys our review of this brand new location. This is over in the Grand Avenue area, which used to be the Streets of America, and now it's sort of a cityscape. This particular location is clearly in California. They've got a lot of Disneyland paraphernalia around on the walls and stuff. And you'll also see an interesting thing about Baseline Tap House is that it is located in a former printing company house. And of course, this place replaced Writer's Stop, those of you who remember Writer's Stop. And so I think it's really cool that the theme has kind of gone through. This place started as Ellen's Buy the Book back when Hollywood Studios first opened, then moved to Writer's Stop, and now it's this tap house that's located in an old printing company. So you've got this sort of like book theme going through. Anyway, the tap house is going to feature basically kind of finger foods or appetizers. You're not going to have a full menu here. It's not a full restaurant. It's more focused on craft beers, beer flights. You've got wine. Cocktails are here as well. So there's a lot of different things to try in terms of alcohol. The eats here were featured at the writer's stop when it sort of functioned as sci-fi dine-ins lounge for a couple of months there right at the end. So you've got that giant pretzel with cheese fondue and mustard. You've got some sweet and spicy nuts and you also have this beautiful charcuterie and cheese plate. It's absolutely gorgeous and we really, really enjoyed it. The meats were fine. There wasn't anything special there, but the cheeses were incredible. So this one's definitely something to think about if you just have, you know, an hour to kill or you're waiting for a fast pass. You want to sit back, enjoy a nice beer, beer flight, glass of wine, and a little appetite. I think this is going to be a good location. Not a lot of seating inside. There is some extra seating outside, but definitely one to consider if you need to just sort of take a load off. It's going to kind of rival Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge. It's that same sort of concept, although the lounge has a much broader menu than this spot does. So definitely head over to Baseline Tap House. Check it out. Try it out. Let us know what you think. If you've already been there, let us know in the comments what you think. And again, we did not mention here places like Trolley Car Cafe, Minion Bill's Dockside Diner, Sweet Spells, Tune In Lounge, and Hollywood Scoops. Those are all great locations. I really enjoy all of those places. Sweet Spells, of course, is where you can get that amazing carrot cake cookie that we love here in the studios. And a lot of people will probably tell you that those are the places where you can get the best food in the studios, and they'd probably be kind of right. So we are not ranking those today, but those are definitely there, and they're definitely excellent. So keep an eye open for those. All right, so we can't wait to hear from you. Please let us know in the comments what your thoughts are and what your rankings are for Hollywood Studios meals. What do you love here? What do you hate? What do you think they should change? Let us know in the comments. And if you want a list of my favorites in Hollywood Studios, head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash DHS list and sign up for our newsletter and I will get you a PDF immediately right into your inbox of all of our favorites in Hollywood Studios. So you can check those off as you go through the studios. All right. Thanks for for watching. Thanks for listening. This is AJ from Disney Food Blog, and we will see you down there in the comments. Enjoy.